By combining Svelte and Phoenix Live View, it's easy to make multiplayer apps without needing third-party messaging services. Want to learn how? Stick around. This is Code and Stuff. Over the last few weeks, I've been testing out Svelte. I don't think anyone knows what it means for an app to be cybernetically enhanced, but it's an impressive tool for building front-end web apps with reactive variable bindings, useful HTML attribute utilities, and a clear separation of behavior and rendering. I've been reminded of the productivity of pre-React JavaScript, unburdened by the complexity of hooks and the unidirectional data flow. That's not to say that Svelte doesn't have rough edges. I'd be lying if I said it was perfect. But the ability to write some functions, use some variables, and quickly build something interactive was genuinely refreshing. But the real magic happened when I plugged it into a Phoenix Live View backend. Okay, on to the project of today. As always, code is available through a link in the description. To start off, I wrote a little canvas-based drawing prototype. It supports a few built-in colors, a browser-native color picker, and the ability to clear the canvas. It's the type of demo you've probably seen many times. And it isn't the most idiomatic Svelte code you'll see, but it's not really the star of the show. I'd also like to introduce you to an Elixir library called Live Svelte. Built on top of Phoenix Live View, this package allows any Svelte component to be mounted directly in a Live View page. It supports dynamic props, event interop, and server-side rendering. You can even write Svelte code directly in a Live View with Sigil V. Now I can see why commenters on my Inertia video were so excited about this pattern. It's a much tighter Phoenix integration fit for a different purpose than Inertia. So let's take that drawing prototype and make it multiplayer. I started a new Phoenix project with mix phx.new scribble pad. And then I followed the instructions from the Live Svelte documentation to get to this starting point. Now let's get that prototype moved over to the new app. I'll create a new file in the assets directory and call it svelte slash draw.svelte. I'll paste it in here. And then next I'll make a new live view over in scribblepad web slash live, and the file will be called draw live.ex. I'll paste it in here, and all that it does is it says I want to render a Svelte component with the name of draw. Finally, I'll make this route available by going to my router file and saying live slash pad and draw live. Now, if I open up my browser to that page, I've got that same app. It's just got some styles applied here. Let's wire this up to Phoenix Pub Sub and get it synchronizing across browsers. LiveSvelte provides a handle to the Live View connection through a live property. And all that we have to do is add export let live. Then we can use that handle by making a new function. I'll call it submit line. And I'll call that function when we're done drawing. Now, if I come over here and draw a line, the live view process crashes. This is okay, it just means the event isn't being handled yet. So let's fix that. As I showed in my recent Rust video, Phoenix has a PubSub implementation built in that lets us broadcast information across an app. If I go into my live view, I can add a couple of things. All right, let's walk through this step by step. First, when our live view mounts, Let's make sure that we subscribe to a topic called scribble lines. Then whenever the server receives a line drawn event from the browser, let's broadcast it on the pub sub on that channel as the new line event. Then finally, when that comes in across the pub sub, let's push the event back to the browser and call it new line. On the front end side, we can use an on mount to register an event handler for this new line event. And when there's a new line, let's draw it. Now, if I did this correctly, this app should be collaborative. So let's open up another tab and start drawing. And sure enough, this is going back and forth. If I draw something in green over here, the same image will show up for another user. But if I hit this clear button, we're not sending that event. So let's follow that same pattern, wire up the clear button, and then move on. First thing we're gonna do is let's subscribe to a new event called clear drawing. And when that happens, we'll call our clear canvas. Then down here where we do clearing, 
Let's make it so that when the clear button is hit, we clear our local canvas and then send an event to the back end. Then down in our clear button, we can say handle clear. And finally, let's send that event through the backend's pub sub by saying handle event, clear drawing. Let's broadcast clear drawing on that same channel. And when we receive a clear drawing, let's let the browser know. And just like that, the clear button should work across the network as well. If I draw something over here and over here, and then hit the clear button, it clears on both. But what if I told you this is the hard way of wiring things up with Livesvelte? Livesvelte makes it easy to push props from the server to the client without any event handler functions, leaning on Phoenix Live View's state assignments. To show that, let's step back for a second. An app that only supports a single drawing pad is much less fun than one that allows multiple sessions to go on at once. To avoid some database setup complexity, I'm going to hold an index of open drawing pads in a gen server called Pad Manager. I'll put it over in scribblepad slash pad manager, paste in the implementation, and then make sure that it's registered when my application starts. That happens right in here. If you want to know more about that, take a look at my Rust video. I'll link it above. Now, this gen server is just a wrapper around a set of strings. It's just the names of the pads. This could just as easily be a database. Next, I'll go into the router and update this pad route to be based on a pad ID. Now over in the live view, we have to read that pad ID and do something with it. So I pasted in a little bit of code. Basically, we're gonna read in the pad ID from the path parameters, register that pad with the pad manager, grab all of the pads and sort them, and then store them in our socket state. We'll update our subscription to have one that is just based on this specific pad, as well as subscribing to any newly created pads. This event is emitted by our pad manager whenever a new one is registered. Then when we see a new pad, let's add it to the all pads assignment in the socket. To tidy this up, I'm gonna move this handle info down with the other ones. This is something that you should be doing in Elixir to keep your apps nice and tidy. Now this is the crazy part. To pass in the current ID and the list of pads to the front end, it's as simple as adding props in the render. All pads is gonna be set to the all pads assignment and the current pad ID is going to be whatever the pad ID is. To read these on the front end, we just have to go up to the top and export these variables. That's really it. They're already bound now. So let's start using these variables down in our template. For each pad that's available, let's render an item that's a link so that we can navigate between them. And this is something really cool that I saw in Svelte. We can make the font bold class conditional based on whether the pad that we're iterating over is the one that we currently have open. Instead of registering a handle event callback, we just exported the prop and let the framework magically send us the latest version. Now, if we jump over to our front end at slash pad slash hello, and let's open that in two browsers, we can start drawing and it'll move over. But if I go to slash pad slash world, we'll see that the world pad was made available. If I draw in hello, it doesn't make it to world. But if I go and join world, now my drawing goes over. Without needing to register any handle event callbacks, we were able to send a prop from live view state all the way into the browser and update it dynamically in response to PubSub. There's an optional optimization that I won't turn on here called Live JSON. What it does is it sends diffs over the wire instead of sending the full prop. If you're worried about the performance implications of this implementation, consider Live JSON. It works really well with LiveSvelte. Hopefully you can see how easy it is to make front-end heavy, but also collaborative apps with LiveSvelte. Svelte is a refreshing way to build front-end experiences, and its bridge to LiveView's WebSocket makes it easy to connect to a backend without needing to worry about APIs. Just get the data to the front-end, either through events or props, and process events from the front-end when it pushes them. If you found this video useful, let me know in the comments below, or let YouTube know by pressing the like button. Since the last video was posted, this channel passed a thousand subscribers. I know it's pretty small for YouTube, but it's far beyond what I imagined when I uploaded my first video. Folks, you are the reason I do this. This has been Code and Stuff, and I sincerely mean it. Thanks for watching.